my name is Scott Johnson from the Low Technology Institute and this is part one of a two-part series on home scale grain production and today I need to prepare the soil and plant oats and barley. Uh, as you can see we've got a field here that was more or less fallow last year uh, so we need to uh, at least knock down this weed load and then plant seeds in it. I have tried no-till. I haven't had good luck with it. The weeds seem to outcompete. Uh, the, the grains I tried to grow. So what I do is basically disc the top. I use a tiller with uh, going in just an inch or two, knocking all this vegetation down, planting the seeds in, and the seeds then have a good, a good head start and are able to um, overtop the weeds. So I don't have to uh, use a lot of herbicides or uh, anything like that. Um, I am going to fertilize uh, a little bit in this field using horse manure. Um, if I'm growing other things, I don't. I'll talk about each plant a little bit as we go. Uh, but for now, uh, let's get uh, let's get tilling. Let's talk real briefly about fertilizer. Generally speaking, uh, different types of grain and different types of applications need different amounts of fertilizer. For example, rye grows really well with almost no fertilizer. So I'm growing rye uh, where I grew corn last year without a problem. Uh, wheat, for me, I don't fertilize um, and I grow on a little bit of a restricted diet, so to speak, because I want really good woody growth for the stems because I use it for thatch. Um, you could fertilize a bit more and maybe get a little more yield, but I'm not that, I don't care that much about that. Because this was used for wheat last year, I'm actually going to put some horse manure on it, um, some well-rotted composted horse manure. I've already tilled it once, I'll spread out the horse manure and then I'll till it again and then I'll be ready for seeding. Um, I'm going to do the same for my barley, uh, and uh, I'm going to do the same for my barley. I'm also going to be tilling and putting in field peas, which are soup peas. They're a dried pea that you can then uh, cook into soup. Because they are a legume, they fix nitrogen in the soil, so I actually don't have to fertilize them at all. Um, and they're not really a grain, but I'm talking about them because this is the time that I would plant them. Uh, this is spring, and you might say uh, spring is uh, too late for wheat, and you're right. Uh, winter wheat is planted in the fall, as is rye. Uh, it depends where you live, it's a different time, so you want to check with your local extension or your, your local uh, state agencies for that uh, timing. Um, but you definitely want to get it in at least like a month before the first frost so that it has a good time to start growing. It's frost hardy, but it's nice to give it a little bit of time. Oats, barley, spring wheat get planted in the spring. Um, and so right now, this will be oats, and so I'm tilling this up uh, in the spring. We're still getting frosts, but that's not a big deal or a hindrance. Uh, I could have tilled this up in the fall and applied my fertilizer. That probably would have been preferable. And then maybe I would have given it a light disking to take down any weeds that had started. Now when it comes to seeding, there's a couple different options. Um, you can broadcast seed. Broadcast seeding is the traditional way. Um, and what one can do is take a a sack or a, an apron um, and have their seed in and what you do your seeding rate is driven by your foot steps so um, for some seeding rates you would take a step and throw and then one and step and throw and one and step and throw uh, if you want a denser seeding rate then you could throw 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 on each step uh, or even every third step whatever I don't know what a seeding rate would be. You would have to experiment on your own to figure that out. Um, what I do for laying down my seed is I put down rows. And because I do not have a large mechanical seeder, I have to use a single row seeder, a garden, an earthway seeder. Um, if you have a multiple seeder, good for you. Um, I don't, and so what I do is I make eight inch rows. And so I've got a measuring tape down here and I'm putting down these white poles every eight inches and then I'm going to run the cedar between them and when I look down the, the the field I see the rest of them or I see this exact same setup on the other side and so what's going to happen is I will just take the cedar and run straight down to its partner and that will give me a nice row the reason being rows let me weed a little better because I can differentiate between what is seeded for for grain and what is weeds. This is especially important if you're coming off of grass. There was grass here before and so this is something I'm gonna have to fight with. 
I find that to be my best um, spacing. You can experiment and find what works best for you. Now, as far as seeding rate goes, I'll talk about that when I get my seeder out here in a minute. Okay, let's talk seeders. I don't have a big seeder, uh, like that goes behind a tractor and has 20, 40, 60 drills. I have this walk behind garden seeder, which is not designed for grain, so I have to modify it slightly. And uh, this seeder, basically what happens is it turns uh, this wheel as you walk, this disc in here turns and pulls up seeds and dumps them out down the chute into this drill that's uh, plowing its way through the soil, um, as we'll see in the video coming up. But I need to drop about 10 seeds for each foot. One revolution of this, uh, this wheel is three feet. So basically, I need to find one of these discs that's going to pick up and drop 30 wheat kernels for over three feet, over one rotation of this. Um, and so basically, what I do to figure this out, and I already know the answer, but um, I'm going to do this so you can find for whatever grain you're planting and whatever seeding rate you want. Ah, so, uh, I'm first gonna start with the Beets Okra Chard disc. The slots right in. Now I'm going to open up my, these are Streaker or Hullis Oats. I'm doing Hullis Oats so I don't have to take the hull off, which I don't have equipment for. We'll talk about that in video number two. So here we have our oats. So I'm just going to drop a handful in here. Okay. Now, now what I do is I set this over a bowl and once it starts dropping, I rotate one full rotation. So, okay, so there we go. So from the top. So that would represent three feet of walking. Now I take the oats out and I count them approximately. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. 60, 78. So that's tw more than twice as much of what I need, almost three times what I need. Um, and so one option I would have, and I dump all these seeds out. One option I would have to modify this would be to take tape and go right over every other one of these. And you push it down right nice and tight and then tear it off so it's not on the back, otherwise it gums up the system. I would cut that clean. Um, and that would reduce my seeding rate by half. And I would do that here, here, uh, here, and here, and then, right, that would reduce the seeding rate, and it would spread them out a little bit. Um, that's one option. Or I can try another one. So this is um, cabbage, onions, endive, turnips disc. You can also buy blank discs and then use a heated uh, metal probe to create your own dishes, little, the little dish cups to catch discs. And maybe someday I will do that since I do do a lot of grain. Make my life a little easier. All right, let's see how many this does. Foot. It's doing almost none. I can see them dropping in there. It's almost none because this disc is too small. So that doesn't work, All right? So it's basically trial and error. So let's talk seeding rates. When you look on an agricultural extension or um, some website about growing wheat, it's gonna tell you how much seed they put in the big machines. They sow at something like 80 to 120 pounds per acre. I'm not doing acres, how many pounds, right? So I don't use that. What I use is um, per square foot, how many seeds, or um, because I do eight, eight inch spacing of all of my rows, um, I just do it by how many seeds per foot. I know for wheat, I like about 10 seeds Per, per linear foot on eight inch spacing, and that gives me like 14 um, seeds per, per uh, square foot. And what that does is it's like a quarter or a half of the recommended tilling rate, uh, seeding rate uh, for industrial wheat, because what I want is tillering. So usually in industrial wheat, you have one seed, you have one plant. Well, tillering 
that one plant senses that it has space around it, so it sends up multiple plants. So from one seed, I get multiple heads. It's, it's more seeds, I get more return on the seeds I invest. Um, and also it works well um, in my application. I'm not sowing as densely, I'm not fertilizing, so it's, it's nice to have that one larger, stronger plant rather than a whole bunch of small plants. So right now, I'm seeding oats. Um, I could sill, till at a similar rate, but I think I'm actually going to overseed because I have a little more oat seed uh, than I do space. So I might actually just use this one. Um, another, another modification you can do is take a piece of tape and go right here. So the cup is still open, but it's reduced. And if I do that, that will somewhat reduce the seeding rate and I'll have to test it to figure out what that is. But play with tape and play with your seeding discs and you can usually find something that is close to the seeding rate you want. And if you don't know what your seeding rate should be, do that's what I did my first year. I grew some at the industrial seeding rate, at the suggested rate. I did some at half that, I did some at a quarter of that, and I did some at double that. And what worked best for me was half the industrial rate. So I just did it by experimentation. I highly recommend that approach. Uh, when we're dealing with small scale because uh, the people who knew how to do small scale wheat growing are either dead or there's actually a lot of people around the world who still grow wheat this way but they probably broadcast i don't know how many small scale farmers in less developed parts of the world actually use a seeder i imagine most of them just use a uh, broadcast method which is a little easier now what i'm going to do is line up with my seeder in this first space and walk down uh, to its partner down at the far end and, that, and when I'm walking I focus far away from me. I focus on the far end of the field and that lets me uh, keep a straight line. I'm planting these at a depth of about three quarters of an inch to an inch. If you notice as I walk I drag the forward, in this case my right foot, and, and deposit a little soil over the line that I've just sown that helps bury the, the grain a little bit so that the birds don't get it all. And then when I finish a route, I take out the, the post so that it's easy for me to see that I'm just headed for the next one that's available. And I don't mind trampling the ground because that would be done often after seeding in like ancient Egypt, they would run their sheep or cows over to trample the, the soil in. That's no problem. And after each pass, I refill. And here you can see the result of this type of seeding. Here's last year's rye and here's last year's wheat. You can see there is some uh, some competing weeds coming up here but because these are spaced at eight inch intervals I can walk my high wheel hoe down them and knock all this down once and then this is going to grow up to be this high it'll blot out all of the weeds and this was prepared just the same way I planted the oats. So you can see the nice the nice results that this, this has. Well, thanks so much for watching part one. Uh, part two will cover harvesting and threshing. I think we're actually gonna do a part three on grinding because that deserves its own episode. That won't come out till later this summer, so if you wanna be sure to see it, hit the subscribe button below. <coughs> if you wanna do a little more hands-on... <coughs> if you'd like some hands-on experience doing this, we will offer classes this summer on harvesting and processing your own wheat. So check out our website, <coughs> lowtechinstitute.org slash events. <laughs> and you can see when those classes come up. You can also sign up to our listserv to make sure that you uh, are uh, alerted when we have new classes up. We'd love to put these things out for free and we're gonna continue to do that, but it does take time and resources from our staff to put them together. So if you're in a position to join the community of people supporting us, please consider going over to patreon.com slash lowtechinstitute uh, to find out more. We have memberships starting at as low as $3 a month. Um, and not only does that help us out financially, but also psychologically to have, have folks helping us out. So if you're in a position, please do consider supporting us. We really appreciate it. Um, and we're already looking forward to parts two and three of this video. So thanks for watching and take care of yourselves.